as you can see, our COVID vaccination clinic is now up and running. That's not the usual looking COVID vaccination clinic, is it? That is the home base for a mobile clinic in Port Hawkesbury, Nova Scotia, on the southwestern end of Cape Breton, right on the beautiful Canso Street. And this is a special project for a pharmacist who hopes to even take this on the road one day. Such a great story. We had to meet Michael Hatt, who's the owner and pharmacist at the medicine shop. And he is kindly taking a 15-minute break from administering shots to talk to me. Good morning, Michael. Good morning. Uh, pleasure to be here. Well, a pleasure to meet you and to share your story nationally from uh, Port Hawkesbury. You're going to be on the road, on the move with me. Let's pick up your camera. Show me around your oh, mobile sure. clinic, okay? Okay. So uh, we actually have a registration uh, out, outside, so people would drive up. And as they get registered, uh, they are invited either into the pharmacy, but we're hoping to get most of the people into the mobile clinic. Uh, there's our uh, nurse, Bernice. Hi, Bernice. And uh, so uh, we would get people to uh, go into the old ambulance, our mobile clinic, and we're providing uh, our COVID vaccinations in there. Right in there. Now, you just said the old ambulance. There is such a great story behind your acquisition of that vehicle. Tell us a little bit about what you spotted on Kijiji and how it all came about? Uh, well, it actually came came about a couple of years ago, uh, sitting at home, uh, just uh, surfing, and it popped up in an ad. And uh, at the time, I thought it would be a really funky looking uh, delivery vehicle for the pharmacy, uh, but uh, didn't think anything further of it. Um, and actually, what happened is last year with our flu immunization clinics, we would typically go to community centers, fire halls in the, in the uh, surrounding area and uh, do flu shots in those halls. But with the COVID restrictions that um, were being applied, that was going to be much more difficult. And I thought back to that ambulance and I said, well, if I was self-sufficient and, and took everything with me, um, I could uh, immunize people in the ambulance and um, have them wing their vehicles. And uh, we would be totally compliant with uh, all the uh, protocols and uh, still be able to deliver them. So uh, long story short, I called the guy that had it for sale. We made a deal, brought it home, fixed it up and uh, went on the road last October with flu shots. And that 16-year-old Ford Econoline ambulance is now being transferred into COVID vaccinations. Now, we're looking at some pictures of it here. Michael, I'm wondering, because on the road for the flu shot, but we can see you've, you've got it parked right now in a parking lot, right? Yeah. So um, right now we're averaging about 75 uh, vaccinations per day. Uh, which makes things very busy. Uh, the ambulance is ideally suited because it's uh, very easy to sanitize. It was made that way. Um, we are able to station it right here in the parking lot. We can have people drive up within feet of it, get in, get their shot, get out, uh, and wait in their vehicle for their uh, mandatory 15 minutes. And uh, it, it's a much quicker process than actually bringing them into the pharmacy but as an added bonus, it uh, keeps the traffic down in the pharmacy. So the pharmacy can still operate day to day uh, without the uh, extra traffic flow and the concerns with, uh, with uh, uh, social distancing. What a fantastic idea. Uh, maybe we can go back to that picture of the lineups because obviously the response is such. People are lined up waiting to go. What are people telling you about being able to get their vaccination in this way, Michael? Um, we've had a lot of positive feedback. Mm -hmm. um, we've got people are saying that it's very well organized, very quick, very convenient. Um, uh, they like the option. Um, right now, we're currently the only pharmacy in the area that's uh, providing shots. Now, there's more coming online with Nova Scotia. Um, we hope that uh, we actually hope that we're not the only one. We hope that more come online next uh, next week. Um, because it's a very intense schedule uh, 
we, we did 50 a day last week. We're up to 70 a day this week, and we're going to be over 100 a day next week. Isn't that incredible? As, as Just in that part of Cape Breton shows you the demand, and of course, trying to get vaccinate, vaccine into as many arms as possible. If things ease up and other pharmacists are there to pick up some of the load, uh, do you think you'll be able to, to move out of the parking lot and do what you did with the flu and actually take this on the road? That is the ultimate plan. Uh, of course, right now, uh, everything we're doing is labor intensive and we're getting uh, the best bang for our buck, I would say, by being here and having people come to us. But uh, once uh, more pharmacies come online and hopefully that we'll be able to take the unit on, on the road and get to those people that don't have the access to get to us. House calls, Michael. It's not an old. It's yeah. not an old concept. You're the pharmacist making house calls now, potentially. Yeah, we're we're, bring, we're bringing the concept back. Yeah, I like the idea. Uh, I mean, it's a cliche to see you've been thinking out of the box, but obviously, you've applied something that, to address a need in your community. And how can you do it? You know, we're getting all sorts of. People saying you know, we need to get vaccines into arms more quickly and pharmacists are saying we can play a bigger role and family doctors are saying we can play a bigger role. What is the lesson for us from what you've done so successfully there? I think the main lesson is uh, you do have to think out of the box. You know, I'm hearing stories of uh, other pharmacies that are opening up clinics outside of their uh, pharmacies as well. Um, the province was very good in allowing us to hire nurses, uh, giving us extra staffing to be able to do more people uh, as quickly as possible. Again, we want more shots and more arms as fast as possible. And um, we're very lucky in this area that uh, Nova Scotia um, took a hard stance at the beginning. And um, that's paying off, but we still need to get those uh, vaccinations out there. So. Uh, um, no, it, it's been a, a, certainly a learning experience. Uh, last week was definitely uh, interesting. Uh, this week we're getting into our groove and by hopefully by next week, uh, 100 a day will just be a simple process. Just a breeze. Well, listen, because people are lined up waiting for you, I'd better let you go back to work. But I would say, I don't know if you know this, Michael, I don't know if you've watched over this past year, but we always like to tip our hats to the heroes and the helpers through this pandemic. And I think that you definitely fall into the category today as you make things easier for people in Port Hawkesbury. Thank you so much for the time this morning. Well, thank you for having us. Appreciate it. Michael Hatch.